I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mike, you married sporting. Why are you wearing a Porto shirt? A, it was the only thing I had in my wardrobe that was actually semi-related to Portuguese football. But B, it also... Why am I saying B and doing the two with the fingers? And B, it'll help me infiltrate the Porto training ground so I can have a look at their tactics. Marcelo Bielsa isn't the only one that can do a little bit of spygate. This is a very tenuous link to the fact that we're playing them today, and it could not be closer at the top. You didn't think I'd do the entire episode in my Porto shirt, did you? Oh, I'm not falling for that. Oh. Sorry to disappoint you all, but yes, I, I have to wear some sort of attire for these videos. Anyway, moving on with the football. I say it couldn't be closer. It probably could, because we could be level on points with Braga and Porto, but we're not. Uh, Porto are currently two points ahead of us, whereas Braga are three, and we've all played the same amount of games. Benfica, as we had a suspicion would happen, is that have come out absolutely nowhere, uh, have a game in hand over us, and could go two points behind us. So the top four now are getting very, very close. But it's safe to say that we have been in pretty sensational form since the last time we met. We have won every single game. Porto Minoso were beaten again. Uh, Belenenses, sorry. Um, they were beaten. Uh, Forense were beaten. And Guimaraes were beaten in the League Cup first phase. Not too bothered about that. The most important thing here is that we are playing Tondela today and FC Porto. Tondela are up first and we're going to have them at home before we travel away to Porto. And then we also play Braga in the fifth round of the Cup. That might be in the next episode, because after that we've got a bit of important game against Benfica, and then we play Porto again. So we've got a really hard run of fixtures coming up. This is where we're going to be tested to the limit. And unfortunately, I've lost Nuno Santos for three months. So it's going well. Polina is also suspended today. If I was going suspended for one game, I'm glad it's the Tondela game and not the Porto game. But the fact that we're losing arguably our best player for a prolonged period of time is not exactly ideal and I think that's really really put a spanner in my championship hopes. Having said that this does give the opportunity for other players to step in Bruno Tabata has not actually been too badly when he has stepped in so he'll be filling in for Nuno Santos today and we've also obviously had to make a couple of changes go around just for injury purposes I've got to make sure that Gonçalves is ready for that game against Porto. So he'll be back to full fitness in two days. In the meantime, then, we're going to try and keep as much of the first team ready as possible and we'll rest up in between this game and the Porto game. I'm actually taking this quite seriously now. So Aidan is in goal. Pedro Porro, Cuartas, Charisma, and Nuno Mendes make up the back four. That has been very, very good in recent weeks. Uh, the midfield's slightly weaker with Seb, Alex, and Yao Mario in the middle. I'm wondering if we're going to get a little bit dominated there today. Hopefully not. Bruno Tabata joins Cabral as the two wingers. And then Spora, who just continues to be absolutely amazing, uh, is up front. 22 goals in 20 games. He's just insanely good right now. And to think, at the start of the season, I was thinking Joshua Zerks will be the main man. Not so. I also have actually brought in a couple of players. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Pedro Nuno is a player we already knew was going to be coming in as a good fill-in for that left-hand side. He can play on the right as well, so maybe not too bad that we're not going to have Nuno Santos, but I've brought him in relatively on the cheap for £1.9 million. He had a very good start to the season with Moranese. As you can tell, he has six goals, four assists in 13 games. Very, very good indeed. He's obviously a quality player and a good addition to the squad. And you'll also notice down here another player, and that is young Eric Garcia, who is coming in on loan from Man City, and I'm actually going to try and sign him because I think he could be a really, really big signing for us, so you hopefully you'll see us do it right now. If I can get him in on the cheap, we'll do it. Bang. He's here on loan for the time being, and I haven't registered him yet, so I'm going to do that quickly now while we're here as well. He might even have time to get into the portal again, but as you can tell, he's a very good player here, Eric Garcia. It may just make it up the fact that we're going to lose Santos. He might make us a little bit even better at the back, which would be incredible. So... Let's quickly assign some shirt numbers. He can be number two, Garcia, and Nuno can be number 27. I'm excited now. We've got two brand new signings. Really, really looking forward to seeing them. If I can get Eric Garcia in on a free, I think that sets us up really nicely for our time here at Sporting because then I think I'll have a back two or three sorted pretty much for my time here. Our home record has been almost imperious. We've been in such good form. I don't want it to stop. The best thing about this is that we're carrying really good form going into the Porto game, provided that we win that today. You can tell there are five wins on the bounce. Need to keep that going if we are going to basically take a title away from our rivals. Alex on the ball whips a free kick in early doors and Charisma taps it in, but I think he's going to be offside annoyingly. 
Lovely ball in from Alec. I mean, that is... He's on. He's on for me there. That... Mm, I'm not happy about that. He's he's on. That's not that's not the start I wanted to today. If we don't win, I'm going to look back at that moment and say that that is a load of nonsense. Alex on the ball again here. We've been very good from set pieces all season, and we are again. Eduardo Charisma gets away with it this time. Well, he shouldn't get away with it. He should have two goals in this game, but he has got his goal. We've done very, very well from set pieces, like I say. It's a great ball in by Alex. Lovely, lovely set piece taker. Charisma with some brilliant movement to the back post. Bangs it. He knows Eric Garcia is here. He wants to keep his place in the team. That's going to do you the world of good, mate. Funnily enough, this actually takes us ahead of Porto if we win this game. But, you know, they're, they're going to have one chance and score as Rafael Barbosa literally against all the run of play makes it 1-1 with a very, very decent finish. I can't say I'm particularly happy here with the way that this has worked out. Rubio somehow... Who did he beat in the air? Is that Cuartes or is that Charisma? Good going the other way, Chris. I'm not so good with the header there, mate. That was really poor. And, uh, yeah, they've scored somehow. I don't know how, but they have. And it's very, very frustrating. I hate it when they score from one shot. It does my night in. I can cope with being outplayed. I can't cope with the one goal from one shot nonsense. Tabata into Cabra. Back to Yamario. Mario. Mario bends it in. That is a sensational save. Why am I getting the feeling that today is going to be one of those days? We should really be 2-1 ahead going by well actually really we should be 3-1 ahead going by the run of play um and the chances but alex puts the ball again quartet has it over the bar every time we get a set piece we look like we're going to score every single time but we're not and that's the most irritating thing is that really for all the dominance and all the chances it is still 1-1 at the break and that is conf oh, that's annoying braga are winning as well braga are the flying the ointment here I mean, don't get me wrong, they're meant to finish fourth, they're a good team, but they're doing exceptionally well, and that's worrying me. I don't think we've actually played them yet. Right, well, time's ticking away, I need to make changes. I'm thinking that Sparrow's going to come off, Xerxes going to come on, Cabral has not been great, I am... Cabral's... he's got it in him. So Nuno's going to come on, he's going to go on the right. I'm going to move Yao Mario up into the advanced playmaker role. I'm going to move Seb into a more advanced sort of midfield role. So we're going to go 4-3-1. It's the first time I've had to play it in this series so far. But we're going to go for it. Move Yao Mario into that number 10 position. I'm also going to bring Eric Garcia on for Charisma. I've rang the changes. I just need to make sure we get a goal here. We can just escape with a 2-1. That'd be ideal. I say escape. We should be winning this anyway. We've been the better team by an absolute mile. We've had a completely legitimate goal ruled out. They've had one real shot on goal, which they've scored. But at the moment, I can't see us getting a second. I say that. There's a highlight. Come on. Let's just nick a goal here. Alex has been brilliant today. He finds Xerxes. Xerxes did it wide. The one day Sparrow decides to have an absolute stinker is the one day where I could really do with him turning up. Is someone going to make themselves a hero here? I don't think they are. We've only got five minutes to go. Jovan Cabral's had an absolute stinker. I'm going to demand more from the boys. It's going to be... No way. Last minute. Poro throws it in. They've heard it clear. Alex on the ball. Come on, if we can win this. It takes such a load of momentum into the Porto game. Mendes, back post. Nuno, good take. Come on, mate. Nuno whips it in. <laughs> Get in, Alex! He's been our best player today. Anything good we've done today has come from Alex Cisaldo, if that's what his name is. Get in! Brilliant from Nuno as well. What a way to make your debut, mate, with the, with the key pass to win a very important game. Great finish by Alex. 2-1. 91st minute winner. Get in! 2-1. It's the stuff champions are made of. We deserve to win that. Get in. Hopefully, that's just one of the bad games. We've had a bad game, but we got through it. And that is what matters. Alex, you were sensational, fella. We're going to tell you well done. He was brilliant. His set piece taking was excellent. Everything about that was amazing. He won player of the day. Get in. Oh, beautiful. And we got a couple of days until we play Porto. Delighted. The seven games we won in a row is apparently a new club record, which is amazing. And we've also got a new record for 13 games unbeaten. So at the moment, we're playing particularly well. Porto are playing Forense today and Benfica are playing Moranese. So keep an eye on those games, see what happens. I'm pretty sure they'll win those. If Porto are playing now, that means they literally have two days. Or they have a day before they play us. 
the fixtures have been kind. Felipe Anderson gets a 1-0 win, but the most important thing is Porto are going to be absolutely knackered for our game. This is brilliant. I mean, it's very unfortunate for them in terms of scheduling, but for us, this is excellent. Eric Garcia is going to sign for Sporting Lisbon at the end of the season. He's accepted my uh, my transfer offer on my contract. That I mean, that's a brilliant signing for us. He could be absolutely amazing. This is a one that could, could be brilliant, and he might get his performance against Porter. I'm not really sure, though, to be fair, because we didn't defend that badly. I'm very, very happy with that. That's a good bit of business for us as well. I was worried there. I saw an injury come up, and I thought that that might be bad news for us. But here it is, then. The important game against Porto. We're away from home. But fortunately, I have the big boys back. Polina is going to come back in for Seb. Alex, even though he played brilliantly, is going to come out. And Gonçalves is going to be playing as the advanced playmaker in that role. I'm going to leave Karezma in because he's been absolutely brilliant. You can tell he's really performed so well this season. He's at a 7.08. I can see him and Eric Garcia being my kind of main two defenders going forward in this team. The only real loss then is that of Nuno Santos, who will not be playing today. I don't know why I clicked on Thiago Thomas. Did not mean to do that. It's going to be big. Let's get into it. Well, looking at their team, they look like they're relatively... Theory. They got some very good. They got Danny Loder. I didn't that. Mariga is on the bench, so Tony Martinez is playing up front. Corona, Pepe, Malang, Sar. That's a good signing. Uh, Manafa is in there. Felipe Anderson, Marco Gruch, Uribe, Luis Diaz, Ivan Nielsen, and Tony Martinez. Well, the man to watch out for is Jesus Corona, who uh, unfortunately for him, bless him, is probably a little bit unfortunately named uh, considering current world circumstances. But um, if we can stop him. Then hopefully we'll have a good we'll have a good chance of winning this game. We played so well recently this season, but this is the first truly big big match. The stadium is packed. They've drawn one in their last five. We have won six on the well seven on the bounce. So this is a huge huge game of football. Get excited, everyone! It's Porto versus Sporting Lisbon. Come on, you sporting. And they're playing a 4-4-2, so Tony Martinez and even Nielsen are up there. So really, we should theoretically dominate the midfield battle, but it doesn't look like it. Coates into Tabata, off we go. Polina knocks it forward. Sparrow with a good flick on, but it's not quite gone to any one of our players. Manafra on the ball to Saar. Mateus hits a ball over the top. Even Nielsen with a good header out to Felipe Anderson. Got to try and stop him. That's not a great effort at a tackle. Anderson, he's dived over there. And naturally, the referee has succumbed to the pressure and given them a penalty. I'm not happy about it at all. So, within the first eight minutes, Porto have a penalty. Even Nielsen steps up and sends A down the wrong way. Not the start I was looking for, if I'm honest. Hmm. Not a good start. Well, it's been very tight and very tense. And there's not really been anything to separate the two teams until this this free kick really i mean they've won the up thanks to a dodgy penalty as fabio vieira goes in and they've just they're clinical as hell mateus is kind of orchestrating everything gruich that's a sensational ball what a touch that is though and i mean a down at your near post you gotta be saving that you got to be saving that we're not quite there it's tony martin as makes it free this is embarrassing how has this happened we should be dominating the midfield i've not seen us win one ball in the midfield it's ridiculous. I mean, we've got a chance for a free kick hit. We need to score this if we're going to have any chance. Cabral over the ball, whips it. Great finish from Jovan Cabral. It's not over yet. Our first shot on goal, and we've scored. It's completely against the run of play. Well done, Jovan Cabral. I mean, it's a brilliant game of football. That's a sensational goal. Right, well, 3-1 at the break. How can I not be angry? The water bottle is being thrown. Anger is, anger is coming out. I'm not happy at all with what I've seen. It's been really, really poor. I'm annoyed, as you can tell, and we're going to try it. We've got to change something here. Uh, Polina's been absolutely atrocious. He is coming off. Uh, I'm bringing Alex on, because he played really well last time out. Goncalves is going into that advanced playmaker role, and Alex is going to step up into the advanced playmaker role in the midfield, and we have to do something. I have to do something, because at this rate, it's just been atrocious. I'm actually going to move my inside forwards maybe onto a bit more of a support role. Uh, Tabata's also going to come off and go bring on Pedro Nuno, who set up the winning goal in the last game. Need more. Need more. This has been really poor. I need more. What I'm hoping is that they become knackered towards the end of the game, because remember, they only played a day ago or so. As Yao Mario just drill, dribbles through everyone there. Pedro, brilliant ball to Nuno. Nuno's at the bar. Spar! There it is. 3-2. Oh, 
they're gonna they're gonna start tiring they're going to start tiring we've had an extra day's rest and it will make all the difference brilliant from yeah mario he just dribbles through so many players plays it back to pedro lovely ball from him nuno who just seems to create stuff Makes a makes the key goalkeeper make a save. Andros Spora is there on hand to tap it in for his 23rd goal of the season. It is not over. It is not over yet. Come on, boys. We come back and win this. Unbelievable. Even the draw from being 3-0 down would be insane. Corner. Alex. His delivery is usually so good. Not that time. Quartes into Pedro Nuno. Quartes back to Porro. Porro, ball over the top, looking for Spora. He's picked it up. Spora whips it in. Oh, I thought he was going to fall a cab round. Not quite. Quartes, lovely ball into Alex. He's the man that's making it all happen. Mario, Spora. Oh, he's in it wide. I don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe We're knocking on the door. We're knocking. We're banging on the door right now. Marsh hits it forward, win that first ball. We do. Charisma takes it down nicely. Great ball into Cabral. We're all over him now. They're tiring, Porter. They can't keep up the pressure. Alex, what? What a pass from Alex. How has Spora missed that? What a pass from Alex. Unplayable. What a pass that was. Are you joking? Are you joking? We've got no one to blame but ourselves. We've literally just missed two absolute sitters. And out of nowhere, grew it. I mean, Aidan, what are you doing? All right, well, Goncalves is going to drop back, actually. He's going to go off and play in the advanced playmaker role. Mario's coming off because he's been awful. Xerxes coming on. We're going for it. We're going 4-2-4. I can't believe that that's just happened. I thought if anyone was going to score again this game, it was going to be us. And out of nowhere, Aidan has literally just flapped it across. It's atrocious. It's a sensational game of football, but, I mean, I'm gutted. Great ball there. Unfortunately, Spara is so far back. But Nuno Mendes goes past his man, whips it in. Not quite. Gonçalves, gone, mate. Hit it. Pedro, lovely hits it. Good save by March. They've just been really lucky, in all fairness. They got a pretty dodgy penalty in the first half. They were clinical. And we've just... On a day where we couldn't really make any mistakes, unfortunately, we've decided to probably make the most that we've ever done in a game under my tenure. It's just annoying. The... I mean, Aidan is killing me here. I mean, this is bollocks. I'm sorry. Come on now. I mean, if you could ever, ever, ever have a game where you make so many mistakes, it's this. I mean, what's that from Aidan? And, I mean, it's it's unfortunate here as well. Felipe Anderson just plays a pass through Coates. I mean, of course, it couldn't go anywhere else. 5-2. It, it should literally be 4 all, a cut Or the, less than that. I don't believe it. What a day to make mistakes. Just not performed on the big day. Xerxes over the top to Sparrow, who makes it 5-3. This is an insane game of football. Oh, my God. I've hit my mic. I have no idea what's happening. We could still make it 5-5 five five with the amount of chances that we're creating. This, this second half of the game has been utterly mad. And if you look at it, we're actually winning the second half, 3-2. Spara again, lovely finish. Why couldn't you do that when it was 3-2, mate? You've done that when it was 3-2, this might be very, very different. But no, we've left it too little, too late. We made too many, just defensively made too, so many. Adans decided to have his worst game for me in goal today. He's made about two or three mistakes. I mean, every single tackle that we are making is falling to a Porto player. Which I find baffling considering they're absolutely knackered. And yet they're still winning every single second ball. Felipe Anderson goes from goal. Oh, well done, Aidan. Well done, mate. I just, oh, I mean, you look at that. Look at the XG. Look at the shot. It's as even as you like. We just made so many stupid errors. Well, we weren't outclassed. That's the one thing I will say. And our winning and unbeaten run comes to an end at the hands of Porto away from home. But if we play like that again... We'll, we'll win more games than we won't, put it that way. And next time we come back, we'll be, funnily enough, uh, no break. We're going to come back straight away for the Port, for the Braga game in the FA Cup fifth round, as in the Portuguese FA Cup. And then we'll also have the game against Benfica away, which could also be very, very crucial. The games are coming thick and fast at the moment. We need to try and keep up. But ultimately, I'm relatively happy. We've got some brand new signings in. We play really well there. It was just a day where we decided we just made mistakes, and that hasn't really happened a lot this season. So I can't be too angry at the boys. I can't be too angry at the boys. I think if we were at home, or if we played that game again, we'd probably win it. If I'm honest, but I think we've missed an opportunity there. I can't. I can't deny that.
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Matching Mourinho. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I mean, what a second game that was. If you have, of course, then please do drop a like on the video, share and subscribe. And until I see you again for another episode, take care of yourselves, everyone. Happy New Year and stay cool. Bye. Bloody Aidan.